Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed Radwan. I'm a Visual Studio LM MVP and DevOps practice lead. In the previous video, I gave an introduction and abstract about the this series for DevOps for Microsoft Dynamics CRM and 365. So, and this is the first video about giving an overview for developer or DevOps engineer who had never worked with CRM before. So this will solve all the conflicts about working with the CRM and from where to start and how and what. So challenges as a new developer. So I think because I, I started working with Microsoft Dynamics CRM 365 as, okay, let's start understand the development. I start facing those challenges. So, of course, it's like, okay, people keep saying like, okay, Microsoft, the, um, the CRM deployment uh, manager and the CRM solution, no, the Visual Studio solution, no, the web resources, no, the, um, you know, so many terminologies and tools and, and I don't know, like, I just need an abstract view about how to develop with the CRM, what is this terminology and what does it mean and all of that. So this was the biggest challenge when I started working with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And to solve that challenges, let's just start from the beginning. Here, I'm just listing some tools and names so you can get familiar with them. So we have a Microsoft Dynamics 365 developer toolkit with Microsoft, and this is an extension for the Visual Studio. And this is just as an SDK, Software Development Kit, which is you need to have so in order to start developing solutions for CR, Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And this is provided by Microsoft by the product team. Uh, there is another commercial tool which doing the same capability with more feature which is called XRM Toolkit, a third party tool. Uh, and this tool, I have license for that as a part of the project that I'm running now. So I will use this tool and maybe in some other videos, I will show you how to use this tool. So you can think this is equivalent to the same SDK, but with more feature. And it support Visual Studio 2017 while the the SDK by Microsoft is still beta for Visual Studio 2017. Uh, there is also the Microsoft Dynamics uh, Deployment Manager, which is just a, a snap-in for Microsoft Management Console. So this is just an admin tool, and we will go through that. So when you when you hear about Deployment Manager, this is just a Microsoft Management Console snap-in. Uh, to manage the dynamic. We have also ALM Toolkit, which is a command line tool that has different tools for solution exporter and deployment manager, which is importer. So by this tool, I can export CRM solution and import CRM solution. I know that. What is CRM solution? We, we will know that in this video. But what I need you to know now that we have a command line tool which is called LM toolkit which gave me the capability to export and import CRM solutions. This tool has just a limitation that we can't specify which exactly solution we want to export. Uh, so it is good for replication between servers but I can't specify which uh, solution which make uh, limited in, in, in some cases. There is another tool uh, which is developed by a fellow MVP, Wael Hamid, uh, and this is uh, a building tasks and it it is published on the Visual Studio Marketplace and it, you can follow this link to reach the GitHub as well uh, for the source control, uh, for the source code. And this is just a build, uh, a VSTS a build task, so we can put that tasks and it do 
some of the process also which is exporting CRM solution, importing CRM solution and many other tasks. Uh, this tool, we can specify which solution to export, which make more um, control about the process of exporting and importing the CRM solutions. Uh, there is another tool called uh, Sparkle XRM, which is a task runner, which developed by a fellow MVP, Scott Duro. And this is, uh, as I explained, uh, just a task runner with, with a lot of feature, which is very nice feature. So you can automate many tasks of the CRM development. So once I installed or I have Microsoft Dynamics CRM, let's see how the client side will looks like. So it's just a web application. When you open the, the it's just a web application. Uh, develop in in .NET. This is why you will find it SPX, uh, the same as the SharePoint. It's just a .NET technology development business solution using .NET. So once you open, you can see that we have here the um, this is the main menu. When I click here, it I have all this main menu which has sales, leads, opportunities, customer accounts, dashboard. You know many things. I can search. I can access the recent so this is the main uh, web interface for the the CRM for Microsoft Dynamics CRM 365 here I just went for more details about opportunities for example let's see for so as we can see we have information about the account the main contact here we we have the decision maker you know we can see here um, end user, we can see also review the proposal, the, the due date, and so a lot of information to manage budget amount, a lot of information to manage the, the leads and the opportunities. So this is a CRM as a business solution. Uh, I'm, I'm not very well in the business solution. I'm usually, this is why I, I didn't get a chance to work with Microsoft Dynamics CRM before because usually I'm more interested for the technology. This is why I don't have experience working with, with many business solutions. So the CRM, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, at the end, is just uh, a web application that just manage some opportunities for, for your customers and you have, to have budget, to have data proposal, who is the decision maker, and, and, and many things like that. So now we can see that this is the client side. If we go for the admin side, we will have the deployment manager that we explained before. So as we can see the deployment manager, I just can see the organization, the server, you know, deployment administrators. Uh, so I can manage that. And here is, um, this is the Microsoft, uh, you know, the snap in to add a snap in. And if you search, you will find it. And just open that to navigate that and this is of course only on the crm server side crm organization one of the the the, the confused uh, terminology when i hear organization so the organizations as you can see from the admin or the microsoft the deployment manager the organization just uh, you know if you are familiar with TFS, it is the same as a TFS collection. It's a separate database where it contains everything for this application. So it's a completely uh, a separate CRM, but under the same URL, but of course the main URL, but with, uh, with another uh, destination. So, Think of it, if you're familiar with TFS, it is the same as a TFS collection. It's a separate database uh, with everything. This is why in my environment, I created one as a dev environment, one for testing, one for staging, and one for production to simulate the DevOps process. CRM solution. I hear one of the terminology of CRM solution, CRM solution, but I don't know. And this is why it's conflict with Visual Studio Solution and CRM Solution. So 
the CRM solution is just uh, a content on the CRM itself. And let's see, and we open that from the web interface, from the client side web interface. So let me first describe what is the content of the CRM solution. In the CRM solution, as we can see, I have first the entities. The entities, you can think again, you know, if, if we're working with object-oriented entity, it's just an entity. Uh, so, and I think this will be translated into table on the database. And we have also the web resources. The web resources will include all uh, it it will include all the the HTML, the JavaScript, um, the images, so all of that client side development. So when we develop client side, we will, you know, having these files in in the web resources. We have also plugin in assemblies. And this is where we have all the DLL development. It's like workflows and plugins. This is the place for them. We have also reports. This is RDL where we deploy the, the RDL. So this is why it's using reporting service. Uh, so I can see the reports here for on the reporting service. So this is the main, you know, structure of the content of the CRM solutions. So how I navigate to the CRM solution. So if I click on the main menu and then go for the setting, select solutions, and then all solution, then I can see all the solution. Of course, if I don't have any custom development, then all solution will be empty. So I need to have a solutions if to create solution if I want to develop a custom development. So here, how I navigate to the CRM solutions. How to import and export CRM solution. As we can see here, I can import and export CRM solution from the settings and going to all solutions. Here on all solutions, I can import and export CRM solutions. Another way also for export solution is to using that. So inside this view, I can click to export the CRM solution. I can also export CRM solution using a command line tool like ALM toolkit. We have dynamic CRM solution exporter where I can export solutions, but again, I it export all solutions. I can't specify which solution to export. Also, I have another tool, which is Dynamic CRM Deployment Manager, which I can use it for import solutions. This is for ALM Toolkit. It has two tools to using export and import. Another tool with, with well, Hamid, is Dynamic 365 uh, Build Tools where I can use it as a build task for deploy uh, for export and importing solutions and I can specify that which is doesn't require any UI it is a build task so this is uh, without UI so let's talk about the development process with a CRM so first we 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 develop CRM using two environments uh, because we're developing using Visual Studio and the CRM itself. So, and this is what they call it no code or low code. Because if they give you the Visual Studio, then you need to write all of that. So, the main idea is you have some development on the CRM itself, which will be translated into configuration, and you have some development using Visual Studio, which will be uh, on the Visual Studio. You create the CRM solution from the CRM uh, web interface. Then you go for the Visual Studio and start creating. We have three types of projects we can create it using the Visual Studio. Workflows, which is .NET Assembly, and plugins, which is .NET Assembly as well, and web resources, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, all of that. This is the only three types we can develop 
using Visual Studio. Uh, also, we may do some development with CRM web interface without any use of Visual Studio because we just go for the, the, the CRM and we're starting you know, changing some of the configuration as I will explain before. This is why our change is some of them is a configuration change on the CRM and some uh, our, our development is some configuration on the CRM itself and some source code it's either c sharp or javascript or html and so on so let's see here as we can see if i have the visual studio which is i developed this i have the crm solution itself as as we can see here and crm solution it means that it uh, exists on a, a crm server and I can develop the Visual Studio with three types of project, which is web resources, plugins, workflows, which is I have these files on my project, on my hard disk. I can open Visual Studio and see all these files. On the other hand, when I'm talking about the, 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 the component of the CRM solutions like entities, processes, or, you know, all, all, all of that existing on the CRM solutions, I don't have files for that. This is exists on the CRM solution on the CRM server. And I develop that using the CRM web interface. I can add entity, I can add field to the entity, and then developing, once I add this field, I start going to my plugin to use this field in a specific way. So this is the way Part of the development is a configuration on the CRM using the web interface and the other part is a Visual Studio projects which is assembly DLL assembly and some HTML and JavaScript and um, CSS. And this is that the, which makes some part of the development and working as a team is kind of challenge because we we have some change on the CRM and some change on the files and we want to work with source control in this way and of course usually we put all our source code on the source control but the configuration which we made on the CRM solution from the web interface they are not on the source control some 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 companies they keep them and some companies they are not in a different way I will list some many approaches. I didn't put my approach yet. Uh, I will I will use that at the end of the project to to put that. But I just listing what I can see for now. So example of development like sales opportunity. So what I can develop. So let me give you an example. For example, what I can develop, let's say that I develop some assembly code to make some um, complex process. So when when something saved, for example, when I save a contact or a, a, an, an, a, an account, I want to um, call a web service. I want to add another uh, data like entities. Uh, maybe let's say... Um, uh, when I add account, I want to add some tasks for this account. So this something I want, and this in case I can develop a plugin. Let's say I want to develop something. Uh, if I want to develop uh, a custom field here on the interface, and this custom field, you know, displaying with drop down and all of that, so this will be a web resources, and I will embed this web resources inside the, the form. It, co it could also be embedded inside the page, which is the opportunity in this case, or it could be a pop-up. So when I click on, on, on this button, sorry, when I click on this button, it will display a pop-up, which is uh, an HTML rendered or um, created in the fly by the JavaScript. So, for example, when I click on a button, I can make an Ajax request or HTTP request behind the scene with the JavaScript. 
so I have HTML and JavaScript so when I click the button then it, it just HTML request connecting to the CRM starting getting some data and start creating HTML as a pop-up to displaying the data or so also I it could be in this way I can do in another way uh, developing web resources like when I change this value to be um, less than certain value then this will be disabled or this will be enabled so I can you know controlling that maybe I, I will hide it or so the main idea I can develop plugin workflows or web resources which an HTML either embedded or a pop-up uh, inside the CRM solution so what and where to deploy to CRM solution so as I explained the HTML CSS images and all of that we will deploy that to the web resources and when we click on the web resources we will see all the file as a flat folder uh, so no matter what the structure you structure all your files inside the visual studio it will be deployed here as a no folder all the files for the web resources css images everything here is the place uh, for the workflows and the plugins we deploy them here to the plugin and assembly and when we click here we can see all our plugins uh, and uh, either it's workflows or uh, um, plugins so this is the place where we are going to deploy our development by the visual studio so development process first approach so again i'm, I'm just listing what i saw for different companies they working with microsoft dynamics uh, i'm not listing the best practice i'm just listing how the company they work for different ways for working so we we got a developer who has a developer machine where he installed visual studio a max of dynamics crm server on his machine so he have he has a complete dynamic crm on his machine and there is a master developer machine where this is for all developers and this is where it has also uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM so usually the developer make change on the configuration as we explain um, he just connecting to the web and change some entities at fields or any change then he start exporting the CRM solutions and importing that to his CRM on his machine so he start developing some workflows plugins and web resources on his machine and usually we when he developed that he can just click on that and like okay deploy that to the master dev so he keep deploying that this is what I saw that you know they are using he keep deploying that to the master dev any changes and so all the time for example if he has some change in the plugins then he build and then okay deploy that to the master dev so he will deploy that so all the time he doing that and at the same time he commit the the solutions and the source code into the, the get or the source control once he ready he just triggers the build or the VSTS build where it get export the CRM solution from the master dev then deploying that to the test or the staging so this one approach another approach which is used in, in the place that I'm working with the same the developer has a, a virtual a, a machine where they have or he has a visual studio but they don't have a CRM on the developer machine so they only have the master dev and the developer makes a change on the master dev and once he have that there, there is no 
there is no export solution from here because the developer doesn't has a, a CRM on his machine. So he just makes a change here. Once he completed, he started developing the workflows, the plugins, and okay, once he did that, then he just, in order to, to test that, he need to all the time to deploy this approach to make sure that you develop that so you will deploy your workflows, your plugins all the time to the master dev so you can have these changes So you because you don't have uh, any CRM. Once with all the changes you keep committing to the source of control so all you have everything like workflows, plugins, web resources on the source of control but there is nothing uh, there is no CRM solution under source control. So usually, as I explain, all the time deploying three projects or maybe two projects or one project depends on what you are developing uh, to the master dev, and then testing, verifying, and so on. Once he completed his task, he triggers the build, which is just exporting the CRM solution from the master dev and deploying that to the testing stage. So this is the second approach. A third approach where developer has developer machine with Visual Studio and Dynamic CRM. They change the configuration or the CRM solution in the master dev. They export that and import that into his machine then he commits a change on Git. So once he got it, he commit with every change on his machine, he commit a change to Git. Then he start developing um, the workflows, the plugins, the web resources, and so on. And then he start committing that as well on the source control. With every commit on the source control, if I if I if I set up a continuous integration with every commit, this will be trigger the build, which will take the source code. There is no zip folder or there is no package for the CRM solution. No, it will just take the CRM solutions and the source code. The source code will be compiled to be assembly and the CRM solution will be packaged, including the assemblies to create the CRM solution package then this will be deployed to the test and this, uh, stage environment. And of course, this including the DLL and the XML. The fourth approach, a developer has a developer machine with Visual Studio and CRM. He changed the solution on the configuration on his machine. So there is no change in the master there but the change happened on the developer machine. And then he committed this change to the source control. Then he start developing some workflows, plugins, and all of that. With all the change, he start committing again to the source control. With every commit, there is a continuous integration where it gets the source code from uh, the source source code from the source control and then just building the assembly creating the package for the CRM, from the CRM solution configuration file and then deploying that so in this way we don't have a master div that of course we have a div environment but people are not touching that by changing the configuration the only and this is my approach I, I put for this force approach as a proposed approach for now uh, because the main idea you are not allowed to touch the master dev but this is will be touched by uh, the deployment by the build from the source control so I keep everything under source control so this is just an approach a proposed approach for now it includes XML and DLL as well so let's talk about the development process in the current situation where I'm running this project without any build automation. So before the working on the CRM solution on the master div, so once the development complete, so as we explained, he has 
Visual Studio in his machine and CRM on the master dev. Once he complete, he start exporting the CRM solution and import that in the testing environment. This is uh, once the verification complete on the testing environment, they start exporting the solution from the testing environment and then importing that in the pre-production or the staging where they having the data because they moving the data from production to the staging so they can have a testing with real data once they verify that then they export that from the staging and they importing that to production this is a process without any build the process with build automation is the same process but just automated so once the development complete once he complete he just to trigger a build when he trigger the build the build automatically start export the solution from the master dev then importing that to the testing environment so this will be verified once they complete they run another build definition which is configured uh, to export that from the testing environment from the solution from the testing environment and deploying that to the staging environment once they verify that they run another build definition which configured to run so they having many build definition and with each build definition it's configured to export from one environment to import that to another environment with a specific CRM solution. So this is the current process. There is many links which is I used to explain that you will find it here. At the end, thank you for watching the video. Please don't hesitate if you have any question to contact me on my blog, muhammadradwan.com. Thank you.